Hey everybody, today we're looking at section 5.5, five, which is going to be talking about inequalities in one triangle. So what we're looking at is that we know that there's a relationship between the side that is across from the angle and the size of the angle. So if I look at this, okay, if I see that this side is bigger than this side, that means that this angle, that the angle across from the big one, has to be bigger than the angle across from the small side. So the larger angle is across from the larger side. And the converse of that is also true. The longer or the larger angle is across from the longer side. So this is the long side, this is the big angle. Okay, so the biggest side, the biggest angle the smallest angle and the smallest side. Those go across from each other, okay? So if you have questions on that, go ahead and write them down, but we're gonna do an example with it in case you are at all confused. So when I look here, okay, I'm starting with example one, and I want to write the angles in the order from largest to smallest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my sides here and I'm gonna label them as small, medium, and large, okay? So now, my smallest angle is gonna be across from the small side. So here's the small side. So across from that is angle H. So angle H is the smallest angle. The next smallest side is, my, is GH right here, and the angle across from that is angle J. That is the next smallest. Then the largest side here is HJ, and the angle that is across from that is angle G. So that's gonna be the largest angle because it is across from the largest side. Okay, so looking at part B, now we're gonna do that the other way around. We're in part B, we are given the measure of the angles, and we want to find the measure, or the lengths of the sides. And we're gonna put the side lengths in order from shortest to longest. So what we gotta do first is find the measure of angle M, okay? And remember, these all add to 180. So I'm gonna do 180 minus 54 minus 39 so that the measure of angle M is gonna be 87. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that in right here. Okay, now, same thing. This is my small angle, my medium angle, and my largest angle and I'm going from shortest to longest. So I'm gonna start with the smallest angle, okay, which is angle L. The side across from that is KM. So KM is the smallest side. Then I'm gonna look at the medium one, the next biggest, okay, which is 54 degrees, angle K. Across from angle K is segment LM, so that is the next largest. Then my largest angle is angle M, and the side across from that is segment KL. So that's gonna be my sides from shortest to longest. Again, because bigger sides are across from bigger angles, smaller angles are across from smaller sides. Okay, so any questions on that, go ahead and write that down now. And then the next thing we're gonna look at is whether or not we can actually have a segment. We know that a triangle is formed by three sides, okay? but not every length can form a triangle, not every set of three. Okay, so like here, four, four, and seven, those are great, they can make a triangle. But if I look at three, three, and seven, if I tried to close this up, these are never gonna hit, they'll never touch. So this, these three lengths together cannot make a triangle. So the relationship between the lengths of the segments um, in order to form a triangle is that the length of the si any two sides has to be bigger than the third. So if I add the lengths for sides AB and BC, they have to be bigger than AC. If I add these two lengths, they have to be bigger than this one. If I add these two lengths, they have to be bigger than this one, okay? So any two pair of sides must add to be larger than the third. All right, so let's take a look at that in action here. So I want to look at example two and tell, okay, here's three sets of numbers that I wanna know whether or not they make a triangle. So I'm going to do three plus five should be greater than seven, okay? 
um, 3 plus 7 should be greater than 5. And let me rewrite this 3 because it's really wonky. And uh, the other one is 5 plus 7 should be greater than 3. So let's take a look. All right, so I have 5 plus 7, or 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 is greater than 7, so this one is true. Okay, 3 plus 7 is 10. 10 is greater than 5. This one is true. 5 plus 7 is 12. 12 is greater than 3. This is also true. So that means that these segments here can make a triangle. Okay, because all of these work. Now, let's take a look at something real quick. When I look at these two, okay, I want to know whether or not it's necessary to actually do these. And when I look at this, notice that when I have my longest side over here, just the longest side by itself is already greater than the things on the other side. So a key that you can do here is just have the smallest two sides be greater than the third. Okay, because again, when we look at having these two sets, seven's already greater than five. So of course, when I add three to it, it's still gonna be greater. Seven's already greater than three. When I add five, it's still gonna be greater. So the only one that I really have to look at is this one. So let's take a look here. My smallest two sides are four and 6.5. So I wanna know four and 6.5, are they gonna add to be greater than 11? Okay, these are going to add to 10.5. 10.5 greater than 11? No. Okay, this is not greater, so this is not a triangle. Okay, these are a triangle. And then let's look at our last one here. I want my smallest two sides, 5 and 5, to be greater than 10. Now, 5 plus 5 is equal to 10. But is 10 greater than 10? No, this is not greater than or equal to. It is only greater. So this is also not a triangle. Here's the reason why, guys. If I have a segment that has a length of 10 and two with a length of 5, in order for them to meet, they are going to actually meet right here. There's not anything long enough to bring it up above that, that uh, longest segment. So it has to be greater. It is not greater than or equal to. Okay? So this one's not a triangle. All right. The last thing that we're going to look at is what happens when I'm given two side lengths. I want to find a possible range of sides that could be the length of the third side. Now, this is going to be, you know, your answers are going to be in the form of like, one is less than X, which is less than 27 or whatever. Um, so we're looking for a range. We're not going to get one answer here, okay? So when I look for problems like this, there's two possibilities, okay? That X is the smallest side. Okay, so the, we're looking for the range, so I want the most extreme. Or I want to know that X is the largest side. Okay, so our unknown side, we're just going to call X. So there's two choices. It's either going to be bigger than 11, or it could be smaller than 6. Those are the greatest possibilities. So if X is the smallest, that means that those two smallest sides are x and 6. So that means that x plus 6 has to be greater than 11. Subtract 6 from both sides, x has to be greater than 5. All right, if x is the largest side, that means that 6 and 11 are the smallest two sides, and they have to be bigger than x. So that means here that 6 plus 11 is going to be 17, that x has to be less than 17. All right, so again, if it's smaller than 11, 
this is our setup. If it's larger than 11, this is our setup. We have to do both because we don't know if it's smaller or larger than 11, okay? So when I put this together, I know that X has to be greater than five, but less than 17. When you write your answers, please use the less than signs, okay? So that way you're writing your answers in smallest to largest. If you have any questions on that, go ahead and write that down now. All right, so what we're gonna look at here is I want you to go ahead and pause your video, okay? And do these problems. And then when you're done, go ahead and unpause and we will check your work and see how you're doing, all right? So go ahead, take a minute and pause your video now. Okay, so let's take a look, check your answers. Remember for number one here, we have to find the measure angle E by subtracting the 90 and the 22 from, three, or from 180. Okay, and your smallest side is across from your smallest angle, your largest side is across from your largest angle. This is a right triangle. Remember, DE is your hypotenuse, which is the longest side. So that should be um, a pretty clear one for you. Okay, um, looking over here, remember our smallest two sides need to add to be greater than the third. So eight plus 13 is 21. 21 is not greater than 21. So it's not a triangle. Here, 6.2 plus 7 is going to be 13.2, which is greater than 9, so this makes a triangle. All right, here, if I know that um, two sides are 22 and 17, then if x is, the unknown side is smaller than 22, then this is the sentence I'm going to set up, and I subtract 17 from both sides to get x has to be greater than 5. If x is the larger side, then these two are the smallest ones. I add them up. They have to be greater than then so x has to be less than 39 okay so little trick here if you add the numbers and you subtract the numbers that's just going to give you your range because that's what you're doing here you're doing 22 minus 17 and 17 plus 22 so you're subtracting them and you're adding them so anytime you're looking for the range just add the two sides they give you subtract the two sides they give you and that is going to be your range um, so if you have any questions, go ahead and write those down now. Otherwise, I will see you guys later, and I hope you have a wonderful evening.